Welcome back, everybody, on TNN Motorsports from the Fram Route 66 Nationals Pro Stock Bikes. It's the finals. It's Matt Hines. It's Angel Sealing. Hines has gone as quick as 729 on the Eagle One Suzuki. He beats Stephanie Reeves, Antron Brown, and Greg Underdahl have had another good outing. And in the semifinals, this lady on Team Winston had a perfect reaction time to take out John Smith. She would like to start a sweep for Team Winston, something they have never done. Pro Stock Bike, Top Fuel, Funny Car. All she's got to do is beat Matt Hines. Run 729 at 184 miles an hour. Coming back off that stunning disappointment at Englishtown two weeks ago, the kid is back on track. Angel, as I mentioned, perfect in the semis. You can't get much better, and she tried to be better than 400. She fouled out on the starting line. Let's go down to David Rafe with Dad Hines. And Dad's got a big smile on his face. The kid gets the job done. Following that E-Town meltdown, you guys just put it in cruise control today. Yeah, we put all that behind us, and we just wanted to come out to this race and, and demonstrate that the breakage at Englishtown costs us a race, but we still have the dominant bike. Honestly, when you guys roll into the finals, how worried are you? I'm so nervous, I can't even hardly stand up. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong on one of these bikes. That, I mean, just the, our crew that we got with us now is really good. And my youngest son's here, and now we're pumped. Nothing went wrong for these guys today, Laura Bird. No, and you know what, Dave? We got Steve Lavalley here with Fram congratulating and handing over the trophy to Matt. Matt, does this make up for last time? Uh, well, it definitely helps, you know. Uh, it was, I was focused pretty intensely there, and, uh, you know, Angel's a tough customer, and we had a long delay there, and, hey, I was able to stay focused and uh, do my own job. Nice run, 729. Oh, man, that was an awesome run. I mean, it feels great. I mean, thing, that thing was just screaming through the finish line. Your daddy says congratulations from the start. <laughs> Matt Hines just about running away and hiding with this thing. Angel and Team Winston giving him a shot. Smith, Myers, and... The very strong Greg Underdahl in the top five there. Matt Hines might be about the most positive shore lock here in Chicago. Well, other than Michael Jordan's Bulls, of course. We have got the Pro Stock Car Finals. They'll be down there on that starting line area, and it's going to be Mike Thomas and the Pennzoil Machine against Warren Johnson, the Goodwrench Service Plus Machine from GM. Warren running out of the number one qualifying spot. Thomas, number three, and here they come. WJ with lane choice. He has been, like Matt Hines in the bike, the dominant car here on race day. Mike Thomas' finish line motors may well have as much horsepower as WJ's, but it takes more than just sheer power in today's pro stock. So much of it is chassis tuning, the shocks, the weight distribution, even the tires. And there I give the edge to Warren Johnson. Unless Warren is brain dead on the starting line, I think he'll probably take this. I, I absolutely agree, Steve Evans. If you take a look at Warren Johnson's track record at new tracks over the last four years, he is undefeated. Virginia Motorsports Park, he's won four straight. St. Louis last year, hmm, I think things point in his favor. He has lane choice, and that is the definitive side to be on. Guys, it doesn't make any difference where they are racing. Warren Johnson deceives the win. This is his 107th final round. For Mike Thomas, he's only 105 behind. He ran him down. 
Warren Johnson was first out of the gate, and Mike Thomas punched him out with a 7.02. 196 miles an hour. W.J. slows to a 7.07, only 194 miles an hour. His worst numbers of the weekend could not have come at a worse time. Mike Thomas in the Pennzoil car down there now saying, hey, Fry, Warren might have won 68 races. I've won one. I might be 67 behind, but I'm gaining. How about that? His own engine program finally pays off. WJ left first. I thought that was a death warrant for Mike Thomas. By that much, the Pennzoil car picks up the win, and the crowd, as they say, goes wild. And they are. That first one's got to be really sweet. Steve? Well, it was Bedlam for a moment down here as well, Mike Thomas. There is nothing like your first one. Thanks, Steve. I tell you, we've been trying for this for five or six years, and it's just so nice to be here. When Warren left on you a little bit, we thought, it's over. It wasn't. Well, you know, it was, it was marginal all the way down the track. I think both lanes got a little slick. Uh, we had a tough time. We got up on the tire and toward the center line, but we just hung in there and kept going and paid off. Steve, give him his first ever national event trophy. Well, he'll cherish that one, Bob Fry. Congratulations to Mike Thomas and the Pennzoil guys, and congratulations to them for bringing that engine program in. Well, Warren put a little distance between himself and Yates and Coughlin. Osborne in the four hole and KJ with that Chevrolet hanging right there in the top five. Ooh, that gives you goosebumps watching a guy win his first race like that, especially when you can kind of run down Warren Johnson. Fuel Funny Cars are on the launch pad getting set for the finals. There's no John Forrest. There is a Whit Bazemore. There is a Dell Worship. There is a TNN Motorsports. We'll all get together in just a moment for the finals. Welcome back, everybody, to the inaugural running of the Fram Route 66 Nationals on TNN Motorsports. We got the fuel cars sitting down there on the launch pad. What a stunning upset in pro stock. And we got an opportunity for the guys from Checkers, Chucks, and Cragen to do likewise here in the fuel money category is young Dell Worship, the 1991 NHRA Rookie of the Year. Trying to win his first race since that Banner 91 season. He'll take on Team Winston, Whit Bazemore, the Ford, who a year ago this weekend won his first ever national event. trends of funny cars have been fighting all day is smoking the tires at the far end of the racetrack. I got a chance to talk to Chuck Worsham to see what he's going to do to try to combat that. They say they're going to try to speed that car up between 200 and 600 foot into the run to keep the car from spinning. It's been a day of destiny so far, so what the heck? I think Del Worsham's got a pretty good shot here, Steve. <laughs> Indeed he does. If you look at the numbers from the previous rounds, you'd have to give the edge to Whit Bazemore. But if you'd have done that in pro stock, you'd have given the edge to Warren Johnson. I certainly did. The one thing I worry about, I love Del Worsham. He's such a great kid that back in the staging lanes, he was so pumped up he was actually trembling. I hope he can just compose himself, Bob. Steve, I know you and I both missed that call badly on pro stock. I mean, Warren was out first and got run down. This one should be a very interesting run. Witt's got to make a run for the championship, and if he's going to do it, he needs to win this one. And what a rebound it would be for Dell Worsham. This team didn't even make the cut a week ago. They joined the Castro four-second club two weekends ago, two races ago down in Dallas. It's going to be a great race here. Somebody's going to pick up their first win of the year here at the Fram with 66 Nationals.
Ruben Smoke and Whit Baysmore gets the win with a five flat, 297 miles an hour. If you're scoring at home, Worsham, 768, 113 miles an hour. Let's give credit where credit's due. John Force went out early. Cruz had problems. This car, Team Winston, was the dominant car on race day. Out of the gate, it's light edge for Worsham. Up in smoke goes his car and his chances for the win. Whit Baysmore wins for the first time since Indy of 1997. Congratulations to Rob Flynn and all the guys from Team Winston. Back on the starting line, it has been a long uphill battle here at the start of the 98 season. Let's get down to the far end of the racetrack and Steve Evans. Whit Baysmore is just now gliding off the end of the racetrack. With any luck, he'll pop up through the hatch. Here he comes right now. We'll get the helmet off, and we'll have a word with a man who has really rebounded here, and it took a car from last year. Went over on this side, if you would, friend. Whit. I tell you, he is going to be excited. One thing with Whit Baysmore you have to do. When he takes his helmet off, you got to get his earplugs out, or he screams at you. So as soon as he does get that off, and we hope it's soon, I tell you, the guys, Rob Flant, his crew, have done just a sensational job. They did not get down this year when things uh, were not going as they wanted to after winning four races in 1997. I tell you, what's having a hard time because he's so excited. Okay, take the earplugs out first. Don't scream at me. What yeah. great job. Five flat. Five flat. You know, uh, I tell you what, that's the team doing that. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome for Rob Flynn, Team Winston, you know. Angel did a good job today. It's uh, We got one more. My teammate, Gary... Uh, Selzy, I'm sorry, Gary. I'm just excited, and uh, it's great. Man, it's great. It is great, Bob. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, oh, what's his name for the win there with Team Winston? John Force went out early, but hey, nobody could really take advantage. Chucky went a couple of rounds. Cruz didn't. Caps didn't. Tim Wilkerson didn't win one here in Illinois, his home state, but that John Costanza car is going to be there throughout the season. Well, congrats to Whit Baysmore and Team Winston. It's going to be the Budweiser King, Kenny Bernstein and Louie, riding along, looking for their second win on the season. They're going to get a chance to duke it out with the other Team Winston car, looking to double up when we come back on TNN Motorsports. TNN's exclusive coverage of the inaugural Bram Route 66 Nationals has been brought to you by Mopar, Chrysler Corporation Parts, and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. It's almost sad, but these Fram Route 66 Nationals are about to come to an end. I say sad because it has been a little piece of history here at this marvelous new racetrack. And the final run will be the Budweiser King, Kenny Bernstein, going off against Team Winston's Gary Selzy, the last two Winston top fuel champs, Bernstein in 96, Selzy in 97. These aren't two drivers you're apt to see having dinner together or socializing. It's not that they don't like each other. They just come from different worlds and they have nothing in common. There were some bad words between them after a burn down on the starting line in Dallas two races ago. They hey, say that that's behind them. They just suffered a race like it was any other competitor. I like Selzy's chances just because he didn't have the major mechanical problems in the semis. Selzy is coming up. I did talk to Alan Johnson and Lee Beard, the crew chiefs for both of these cars. Both crew chiefs are saying they're just going to race the racetrack. He is getting off the starting line, the first 100 foot, 200 foot, just like we saw with Del Worsham. If, uh, if Kenny Bernstein expects to win here today, he's got to get the job done. It would be his 50th win, so uh, a lot on the line for Team Red. Kenny Bernstein gets the win at 5.58 Smokey seconds, 265 miles an hour. He gave Louie the ride of his life. 
and Bernstein, who came into this race with five consecutive first-round losses, had not won a round since winning Gainesville on the National Event Tour, wins it like this. From another angle, it still looks like the Bud King out in front and Kenny Bernstein with its second win on the season. It wasn't dominating Bud King performance, nor were the numbers there for Alan Johnson in the finals as he's jumping up and down out there on the starting line area. Kenny Bernstein was way out the top end of the racetrack and Steve Evans is down there with the King. Well, Kenny Bernstein, apparently you won that. It was a wild one. Apparently there was some controversy in the tower, but I'm going to say you won it because it looked to me like you did. That would be Kenny's 50th win. As Dave Reef said, Steve LaValle from Fram, an old pal of yours with the trophy as Kenny gets his hat off. That was like the days in Caddo Mills when you first started your tough fuel career, smoking the tires. It wasn't pretty, Steve, that's for sure, but boy, we're just tickled to win any time. I don't know what the controversy would be at all. Uh, I can't imagine because know, obviously, yeah, well, they get confused up there sometimes, I guess, but we're just tickled. Budweiser, Prolong, Mac Tools, all of them. Borla, I can't stand it for Borla, a champion, those people. My two buddies back there I took the 50 bucks for last week on the golf. That was your gallon of gas. That was Skip and Mike. We appreciate it. Bagwell, with all the guys up there, August the 4th, uh, LeBron, Le Le you name it, you guys, this one's for you. And Karen, darling, Winston, we're that happy. <laughs> Enjoy that permitted malt beverage, Bob. The controversy came because the wind light out there on the track actually came on on Gary Selzy's side of the track. That's why I saw the Team Winston guys celebrating. Corey Mack went out early. Joe couldn't take advantage. Selzy makes a move. Mike Dunn and Jim Head, who did not qualify, round out the top five. Congratulations again to Mike Thomas. The Pennzoil Pro Soccer is our Mopar high performer of the race for beating Warren Johnson on the racetrack and for winning his first NHRA Winston championship event. It has been a great weekend. The area that gave us Mr. Norm and the Chi-Town and Gary Dyer has now given us the best racetrack on tour. Let's take a look back at history, a look back at the inaugural Fram Route 66 Nationals. your personal source for all things country from race cars to country stars connect to country.com thanks for being with us on tnn motorsports